All right, so now you can go ahead and remove your front O2 sensors. Um, they make a actual tool to do this, which works superbly. And I highly recommend it. I think it's called like a crow's foot or something like that. And it's a special wrench that you can put on there and put a socket, or I'm sorry, like an extension in it and crack these free. Um, I cannot find either of mine. I have a couple of them. So right now I'm just using uh, channel locks on the passenger side. And these are larger than 21 millimeter because that's the largest wrench that I currently have with me right this second. <clears throat> Okay. That's that side. And I don't think I'm going to be able to get this side with channel locks. Dang. Oh, I got it. Okay. Good. It's called a crow's foot, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Looks like the passenger side has a little bit of like a green wire marker, possibly to identify that it's for the passenger side. So there you go. Okay, now we can go ahead and move on to actually removing the downpipes from the backs of the turbos. And these, if I'm not mistaken, these are copper nuts. I'm looking right now and they're already pretty beat up on my um, on my car here. Um, <clears throat> when I installed these downpipes probably about a year and a half ago, what I did was uh, I did heat them up with a, with a map gas torch. So you apply some heat to these and then it makes it a lot easier to crack them free. Uh, if you're installing downpipes on or I should say if you're removing stock downpipes that have been on for 10 plus years, just apply heat. Because if you're gonna if you end up breaking these studs off, then you have to extract from the uh, the turbos themselves and it's more of a headache. So might as well just heat them up so they come free. I think what I'm gonna do is just try to crack them free. Uh, like I said, these haven't been on for that long. Um, they are on the hot side of course of the turbos. So they are exposed to a lot of heat and stress like that. But um, I am replacing my turbos ultimately. So if I crack a stud or whatever, it's not that big of a deal to me. Now to you, uh, if you're only doing downpipes, I would recommend heating these up first. Okay, so these appear to be 15 millimeters. And if you're removing these while the engine and trans is still inside the car, good luck. You're going to need it. Buy a torch, put it on each of these fuckers for a while, and then uh, crack them free. Look at that. That one's just falling off. Wow. Amazing. Okay, the bottom one's a lot harder to get to. See if we can zip these off. And these are not to be reused. They are, I don't know what they're called. I call them wobble nuts, but they have an oval shaped hole in them. I don't know the exact reason why. And I believe they're copper or something. So they scratch and bend easily. So buy a new set. ECS tuning sells a turbo install kit that comes with these nuts, washers, gaskets, all that shit that you need. Okay. This bottom one I'm most likely going to have to take off with a wrench.
That one pipe already wants to fall off. Check out my do-it-yourself stage 2 videos if you want to see how to do this while the engine trans and everything is still in the car. In those videos, the big difference was I dropped the subframe while supporting the engine from above with a cherry picker. And it worked. It was just very tight quarters. There you have it. What do they call these? Divorced headers? Okay, and don't forget the bottom one. Underneath here. Okay. That'll just slide right off. Okay guys, there you have it. That is how you uninstall the heat shields and downpipes on your B5 S4. If you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to ask. And be sure to check out my smartphone app.